That's a uh, Magnus on the opposite side, yeah. Yeah, that ma that's Magnus. Okay. What's your initial game? What's your initial thinking? Initial thinking about the game plan once you see that your opponent is Magnus. Like, do you, are you thinking you're gonna harass him? Are you thinking you're gonna focus on the last hits? Uh, walk me through your your process of 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 for this lane. So, ma. I was like, I'll try to harass him as much as I can. If he is good, I'll just focus on last hit. Mm. And also, I don't. Uh, I have to make sure that I don't get comboed from his first skill and then pulling me under his tower. <clears throat> and and yeah, uh, keeping keeping up with Tom. Usually, as a ranged hero with. Especially with Klings, who has unlimited harassment possibilities through searing arrows. If you think about Magnus at level 1, if he wants to farm, he must take the Cleave thingy. Which, yeah. at level, which at level 1 is easily offset by you eating a tango. So, against this lane, I haven't seen what you are about to do. But the general process is it's that you have all... The possible advantage you can have at level one with the free orb movement. You do know what orb yes, movement is, yes. yeah? Okay, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. With the orb movement and, and with the fact that he has no skills to touch you directly. So I'm yeah. expect I'm expecting you to just dump all of your free moments into him. So let's see if that happens. Did he take Shockwave? Uh, I think, yes. Yeah, he did take Shockwave. Well, what I'm gonna say is that if Magnus takes Shockwave or Empower, like I said, you know, he's not gonna harass much. So, in reality, what you can do is you can literally just follow him anywhere. Like, you, you, ha you had a really good block. He's on your high, I mean, the creeps are on your high ground, so ideally what I would say in these situations you can do is you can position yourself extremely aggressive in the middle of the river so that you're directly okay. blocking his path to his tower. And what's going to happen is you will have all of the clear shots towards hitting him. I mean, in this case, it is okay. even, I, I would say, worth sacrificing some of the melee creeps to just be extremely aggressive. Of course, you still want to take that range creep, but that shouldn't be too hard with, uh, with your arrows. So in the end, what happens is, because he cannot trade as well, he's gonna, he's gonna lose most of his HP minute zero in this wave, and he will have to waste his health. If he doesn't even have a self, that's a lane one for you. But he did have a self, but even so, with this much advantage, you, ha you would have no problems to just making your goal to just hit him, hit him, hit him, and hit him. And in the end, he'll have no HP, he'll have to yourself. Okay, I mean, that was my plan. Uh, yeah. That was... Your plan yeah, because, was yeah. correct, but the execution of such set plan is you gotta always think about the variables. Like, you wanna, you wanna hit him. Like against other yes, heroes, yes. You, you will you will want to hit them, like being safe, mind your positioning, but with the with the fact that you have you can orb walk, and the fact that he cannot skewer you because he does that doesn't have the spell, you can but just. How will I know if he has skill skewer or not? Since he didn't, mm, he wasn't uh, he didn't use a second spell, so hundred percent I didn't know if he that is, used that, that. That is correct. You are right. So in. If if we would rewind to ten, 10 seconds back, you would see that he fake pumps his shockwave spell, and that's exactly where you know that he has shockwave. In other scenarios, he will usually apply empower, and you would either see the application or see, see the buff. Yeah, as soon as you confirm that he does not have skewer, this is where you go extremely aggressive. Like right now, you can easily take the last hit on the creep. And then you will you will want to literally block him 
well not body block, but position yourself in between him and his tower. So right, right about here where I'm circling. Every every single other free second you spend, you hit him, you move a little, you, you hit him, you move a little, and in the end what happens is as you're hitting him, you're moving close to his tower, and he's very fast losing health. And as soon as he's done last hitting, he will have to he will have nowhere to go. He will have to leave the lane either through the sides or go through you and suffer even more. And that is exactly what you want. You want to you want him to have to have a really bad escape options. So whatever he chooses, the first wave, you completely destroyed him. Yeah, because if uh, if I spam there, then I won't be able to deny creep. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if I'll be able to deny creep. And somehow, if he gets level two, then uh, creeps from his side will be coming. And then if he skewers me, I'm I think that I'm dead hundred percent. The thing is that as a clinks, you only have the damage advantage on the offensive attacks, not on the deny attacks because there's no searing arrows yeah. so denying okay, okay, okay. De denying magnus shouldn't even be in your game plan because at yeah, best exactly. that that's lucky at worst it's not gonna happen so what i would say in this scenario yes uh, your fear is correct as soon as he as he gets level two he might see a chance so what i said still applies except as you see the last creep getting close to death then you start consciously thinking about your positioning because there, there's a lot okay. of space on the stairwell, you can still be in the middle of the river, not going exactly on the stairwell. And in the end, you will see him try to skewer, or you can just juke to even discourage him from skewer. But in the end, still from your aggressive positioning, he will lose, he should lose over half of his HP and be forced to sell or straight up lose the lane. Okay, okay, okay. So, isn't that an even trade for him? Even if he gets uh, uh, fairly one one more salve. The thing is, you can only you can only harass Magnus at the lower levels because at higher levels yeah, he will just true. he will just clear the wave too fast. So you must push your advantage exactly on those early levels. Now let's do the math. Yeah, yeah. If you focus only on the range creep, you will get it all the time. People get it all the time. But then, it, like you said, if you somehow manage to miss all three melee creeps. By focusing on him, that's that's 120 gold difference. That's exactly one self. So worst case scenario, you're coming even, but he no longer has a self. And now the second wave comes. You can continue pressuring him, and then he has no choice but to delay his items to send one more self. Or even better for you, he does not approach the lane because you will out harass him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you always gotta think economically, is it worth it? Like in this case, uh, it might not seem good, but it's it's your only option until he gets level 3 and he can just simply ignore you, clear the wave and go jungle. If there is, yeah. any if there is a chance to win the lane, it is exactly during those first two levels. So you must, even if it doesn't seem economically viable, you must push your advantage right there and then. Okay. This okay, is I guess I'll I'll try it again because I've tried uh, what you say uh, what you're saying, and most of the times I lose uh, I lose gold my um, the difference between his uh, his or w whatever hero there is some tanky hero because Magnus is tanky hero if it's uh, Wind Ranger or any you know um, uh, low XP hero that. Then I always be aggressive because I know that's when I can be aggressive and make advantage. Uh, but since he is a high HP hero, so and I try doing that, but he has uh, he can farm really fast than me uh, with his cleave in the jungle. So that's that is when I decided then that. Okay, maybe I'll I'll also farm. He'll also farm. I need I need to kill other heroes uh, by getting orchid before he gets his blink or maybe echo saber or whatever. Yeah. So what we're saying is, as you come into lane, there's there are two possibilities. 
possibility when you out harass him he has to get a self he gets his items other items delayed or even better he he does not even approach the wave because you pose a threat to him uh, and the scenario two is that you don't harass him you focus on your farming and he focuses on, on his farming so while there's yes. a 50 50 chance that either of these will happen you must always attempt for the first option because the first option will give you the most space coming forward okay 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 this is of course very sp specific for the clinks versus yeah versus of, course, of course uh, Naturally, any tanky hero who doesn't care about me hitting him too much if he has self yeah it can also apply i would say to uh meepo yes he also yeah. can operate similarly okay. basically anytime there's a situation where a hero is vulnerable at lower levels but ignores at higher levels you must try to press your advantage at the lower levels yeah yeah true true so as you can see i i've tried to harass him as much as i can but i don't think is it enough harassment his HP is one, maybe two tangos or something like that. Well, yeah, if you didn't pressure him enough on the first level, then as as the time goes on, it's less and less valuable for you to, to do the harassment. Like, I would say even right now, the lane is, is, is on his high ground. So it, it's not a good position for you to throw the arrows because you might miss. So I, yeah. I would say if you if you have missed your chance to do extreme pressure on level one, in that case just switch your strategy back to making it a farm lane instead of a kill lane. Okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. Like if you're not forcing him to self, then he really has nothing to, nothing to be afraid of. Like yeah, you, again, you, you, this is sort of advantages, but much much less from the first from the first wave because now he has skewer you cannot be as aggressive with positioning if you wouldn't have a self i would say go for it but right now it can go either way so that's a player's decision my educated guess would be to just focus on farming from this moment on okay What we do need to talk about it is uh, the lane positioning. If you might have noticed, this is the second wave that comes under Magnus' high ground. What this means, and I think you know that, is that if you come there, you will have extremely bad time getting those last hits, you're vulnerable. So would you, would you agree that this position should not happen in the first place? What, I, what could I have done to, uh, you know, not let this happen? The easiest way to fix lane positioning is to simply go and block. You can even go and block as far as from the the point where the creeps spawn. I mean, this this Magnus he he chose a different skill build. He he does not have cleave, so he does not push naturally. Which I would I would say is a smart choice because Kling does not have wave clear, so he will have a really hard time in the jungle. So it would make sense for Magnus to try to freeze the waves on his high ground, which is exactly what is shown here. So the wave. Yeah, it was. Uh, what? Why I went here because I thought that uh, he'll push the lane, and after some time that will happen. Then I saw that the creeps are there. If you see my player perspective around this time. I realized, so I I actually panicked. Like, uh, okay, this laning phase has gone to shit. Uh, he'll have one, maybe two level advantage, and I was I was very confused what to do at this point. Yeah, so there's two solutions. The first one, like I said, is to simply block from the start if you feel the need, okay. and the second one is also a pretty easy to execute. Just simply grab the next wave from here 
and oh. drag them all the way back. And that's it. That's two solutions where the opponent cannot do anything about you fixing the lane. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, and and clings, changling, single creep like this, wasting mana is yeah, the least, very... least least favorable thing you want to do. Well, I mean, if, if there's anything else you, you think would be beneficial, you can continue watching forward, and if not, then yeah, we can skip to the other game. Yeah, uh, no, you tell me, because I, I am very confused about this game. Uh, I think mistakes happen very early, or not even... I mean, I don't know, that's why I asked you, like, what what I can do. Okay, let's, let's continue watching. Like, is, is there any recovery for me uh, from here? He played really good. I, um, this situation right now is good for you because you can still take last kits under the tower. You will always out damage the Magnus with their arrows. So the only logical solution where you cannot touch him is to create situations where waves will bounce between towers. Oh right, 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 right. The okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I tried hitting him, and this is what he does to me, and I'm super confused. Yeah, you shouldn't even attempt to trade with him. You will, you will only waste your health because at this point, like I said, your only opportunity for trading with a Magnus is at, at at level one and two. Afterwards, if he goes aggressive, you just fall back. He cannot really kill you under the tower. He doesn't have the damage, the tools. But if you trade with him, like right here, or try to trade with him, and and you pay the price. If you haven't attempted to trade with but him... But he went, he went under my tower and scared me out of the tower range and then fucked me over, so... Yeah, that's false sense of security. Yeah, so... And after this, he just keeps killing me. He dives tower, kills me, dives tower, kills me. To the point yeah. that... Uh, everyone in my team has... Uh, trash talking me, which is obvious. Even I, I might. Okay. If I'm playing some other rules, which I don't, which I don't. Usually I don't, but yeah, I lost the lane horribly. Again, I'm gonna assume you are seeing him with low health, and you must be thinking, hmm, here's my chance to harass him. Did you, did you think that? Not really, but. Uh, I attacked few times and then his health went really low and then yes I thought right now I know that no I can't do anything to him but then he baited me really really good I think that's what happened uh, I think this is two, two, two days three days back so I don't remember and I want to forget this game but I also want to learn it so yeah I think he went very low Maybe to bait me. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, I thought maybe I'll kill him, and yeah. that's when he baits me. I don't, I don't think he dies. Or maybe he did. Or maybe Jakiro TP'd. Um, I think Jakiro TP'd here. Yeah. So what I want to talk about is that um, again, it's it's in the same relation as the false sense of security under your tower. This is the same concept, except it's false sense of a possible kill, so to say. But in reality, like I said, you gotta remember again that Magnus is a one tough son of a bitch and he just did refill battle, so unless there is some outside circumstances which enables your kill, like someone rotating or yourself getting a rune, just even if he's slow, just forget about him. Just focus on your farming. Because, yeah, like you said, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Th that's exactly what happens. You get baited. If you haven't if you haven't been salty about killing him, you might not have been as aggressive. You would just take those creeps, uh, fall back, wait for the waves to bounce back to your tower, and just farm in peace. And wait for your timing in the mid game, because your timing in the early game, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, and we yeah, all, all, yeah. and we also have 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 discussed like three or four different ways how to prevent even getting to this point. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's no point continuing further. It's... Yeah, okay, let's hop over to the Storm game. So, Storm versus Lone Druid. Again, what, walk me through your thinking process for this lane. Uh, again, so uh, every game I, uh, when I go, I try to judge uh, who my enemy is, if he is good, or if he is not, if he is good, if he is playing the lane correctly, I'll uh, I'll try to maximize my farm. Since he is lone druid, and I can't do much to him unless if he plays correctly, if he uh, uh, if he <clears throat> if he keeps the keeps his bear in in between him and me, uh, if he does that properly, I'll I won't harass him. If he doesn't do that, if he misplays, I'll I'll understand that 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 the enemy is weak i mean he's not a strong laner and i'll go ham on him otherwise i'll just uh, focus my farm and yeah that's the most uh, that's my idea of thinking when i know that uh, i don't do much to to the hero like say for example it's some melee hero uh, like uh, Void Spirit or Ember, then then I don't l let him stand. I try to not let him stand and I position aggressively be between mm, his range creep and my range creep. But since it's Lone Druid, uh, who also has the root ability uh, even at level 1, so yeah, I'll, I'll just, I, I just try to see, uh, try to analyze if he is playing good or not, playing the lane correctly or not. Is it? A good thinking, or should I all? Yeah, in tag, in tagging, uh, yeah, the root. I would say that's a pretty default way of thinking, which is, of course, correct. Now, from my experience, if a guy is picking low druid, he's most likely well versed in the hero. He understands the matchup, so I would say I wouldn't even risk it trying okay. to see if he's good like maybe like with a storm you are much more you have much more freedom to just switch modes to a farming or, or a fighting state so yeah i mean there's a small chance that the launch wood will be bad and you might come out on top being aggressive but by default i would say if you see Alone, Druid. Don't don't even don't even play the game to see if he's bad or not. Just simply focus on your farming because Lone Druid, a good Lone Druid, is a hero that if you commit, you're gonna have a bad time because he will commit harder. So my general advice coming into this lane is to just be the default set of action is to farm. And just maybe, uh, just maybe, you notice yeah, okay. a crack in his gameplay, and then you can switch to being aggressive. So, do you remember uh, I told you that uh, uh, I think two, three, two, three weeks back, or maybe last month, that <clears throat> that uh, rushing bottle was not working for me. Uh, rushing, uh, sorry, rushing orchid was not working for me. Do you remember? Remember that? But I think my advantage is leaning. I I was good at it, but I also want to refine it again because I think I'm playing way, way worse than how I used to play uh, maybe eight months back. Because okay. I switched from uh, position two to position, position one. Uh, so yeah, I want to capitalize on my leaning skill. And that is why and so that is why I I think uh, I traded a lot with him. I'm not sure if I got the kill or if someone rotated. But okay, let's see. So if, if I'm understanding what you're trying to say is that you as a player 
that as a hero you have preference to be aggressive regardless of of if it should be or not cool. and what you're trying to fix is you you want more ways of thinking to know more movements in which you do not rely on being aggressive but you can outplay your opponents in other ways one of them being farming yeah uh yeah i obviously want to uh, improve my farming uh, that that is the second part of leaning that i want to uh, address uh, i have seen your gameplay you get orchid sometimes even eight uh, eight or nine minutes is your fastest time i i think pretty is it much not? yeah yeah i uh, I tried uh, your method, uh, like r rushing bottle and then uh, direct orchid. Uh, I don't think ever uh, I have ever gotten orchid before 14 minutes, and those replays are not there, so I I, I can't even go there. But yeah, uh, just look at my gameplay, see uh, see what I do and where I can maximize the farm. Well, first of all, if, if you're going into this lane with the approach that you're going to be aggressive, just by default, being aggressive will always yield less farm than... Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me clarify what I'm trying to say. Uh, like, obviously, uh, my approach is aggressiveness. So, like, forget that I'll get uh, Orchid around 12 minutes. If I'm being aggressive, maybe I'll get it at 14 minutes. But now I don't even get it at 14 minutes. It gets delayed to 15, 15 minutes, 16, uh, not, not even 15 minutes, 16, 17 minutes. So that should come down to 14 minutes is what I think, even if I'm going aggressive. Uh, do, you, uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? What I'm saying is that even if you're aggressive, you're still having trouble meeting the timer which is expected for someone that is being aggressive yeah 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 exactly 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 cool. what i'm trying to say so yeah as per usual let's see the general mistakes and then see what we could have done better okay so i'm, I'm not gonna talk about what you should do to make this a farm lane or what you should what you should do to make this a kill lane i'm just gonna approach this generally from uh, seeing okay. try, try to see general mistakes and then maybe in the next session we can break down exactly how to make a lane a farm lane and maximize that farm but for now like you said you want to know how to be how how to meet the timings while being aggressive yeah yeah, yeah. At the, at the moment, are you still approaching this lane as an aggressive lane? Uh, no, at this point, uh, not really. What about 20 I seconds ago? So. Uh, I was an analyzing what he's trying to do. Okay. Well, yeah. as a storm, regardless also, of your... Uh, also, I, I forgot how much damage my remnant does to his... Uh, does to his bear so <clears throat> i thought that he is very tanky and i won't be able to do anything to him but then i realized that okay my remnant does significant damage to him so then i shifted my gameplay from what i can remember all right well wh what i was saying is that regardless of your approach to the lane whether you're making it a farm lane or a kill lane at at level one there is a very specific set of heroes in which you want to keep the lane static. And those okay. heroes you will not meet in the mid lane very often. It's the heroes that do not pose you a kill threat, a harass threat, or the night threat, or any other threat. That, that would be, out of the top of my head, would be Meepo level 1, Nyx. You don't see Nyxes very often. Even... Nyxes. Mix assassin or yeah. mix or what? Okay, okay, mix. Okay. Broadmother, 
basically heroes with pretty low base damage and no ways to wave clear efficiently. So what I'm saying, against only against those heroes will you want to do what you're doing right now, which is maintaining high guard advantage and trying to right click your way to victory. Against anyone else, including of course Lone Druid, your as a storm your advantage is the ability to get a fast level two. So right now, in this situation, yeah. you're actually creating a disadvantage because you're allowing Lone Druid with the beer, with a beer to out last hit you and out harass you because they combine, they have more resources. And your ideal game plan is to wave clear the first wave as fast as possible. This way you're level two and he's forced to go under his tower where you're oh, absolutely yeah. free to do as many right clicks into the beater or him as possible. Um, right, right, right. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense, yeah. So while, while you're trading hits, while you're trading right clicks, he's also trading right clicks, and in the end, any advantage you might have had is nullified because you're not preventing him from doing so. <laughs> okay. And even now, even if you did what you did in the first lane, at this moment you can recognize that you're still level two. He's still level one. And at I this moment, think you yeah, I did. I did. I saw the two creeps. I saw this, and I think I went aggressive on him. I'm not too sure. You don't go aggressive on him. You go aggressive on the wave to force this wave oh. under his tower as soon as possible. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. I mean, tr okay, okay. Try, try to think of the advantage you're creating. Like right now, like you said, you, you probably went aggressive on him. What that means is that you have synced in like five to ten free right clicks into the beer but imagine if it was five to ten right clicks plus all these creeps under mm -hmm. his tower and now he has to choose either he eats the damage from the creeps maybe he last hits them maybe he tries to do both but the tower is messing up the last hits your right clicks are also messing up the last hits and for him it's a mess all around he doesn't want that what he wants is for you to keep the lane in the river, where he can simply do his thing, and that's what he does. You also might want to commit either to the beer or to the druid itself. If you would mm. would have checked can the you, items. Can you repeat what, what you're trying what you're saying? I didn't get you. Right now you're missing the attacks. Half of your hits land on the beer, half of your hits land on the druid. You gotta commit to either hero here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, what I was trying to do was uh, use the remnant on, um, sorry, not remnant, less, yeah, rem uh, re remnant on bear and then the passive on um, the hero himself. The thing is that any lone druid, like 99% of lone druid players, what they will lose, they will summon beer as the game starts and what this means is that by the time you the storm has wasted all of his mana trying to kill the bear he will simply move it back and resummon and in the end what happens you, okay. is you have wasted all the mana and he just presses q and now you're um, at a huge disadvantage actually that's what happened i i wasn't sure uh, what's the cooldown for his bear is and I think that's exactly what happened. Uh, and okay, okay. So you're you're saying that I shouldn't even 
use my first skill i just hit the i mean uh, hit the bear right uh, sorry hit the hero sometimes like i said if you if you have created a double wave then you might successfully kill the bear because okay. you can you can go aggressive while he is in the tower but isn't this uh, the double wave but that's extremely risky so in general okay. yeah okay. i would even ignore the bear and go for the hero okay okay Okay, okay, so uh, not use my first skill, uh, just attack the bear, okay. If your game plan is to go aggressive, yeah. This game it worked out, but in general it shouldn't. You just got lucky. However, if you do did manage to kill him, and he is reckless just as he now, then yeah, I would say what you're doing right now is the right move. You have seen him not take care of the bear as much as he should. So you go aggressive to kill the bear, and as you know, if you do manage to kill the bear the next for the next two minutes, the lone truth will be absolutely miserable. Yeah, actually, that's what I thought, that he he's not a good uh, druid player. So then, uh, manage my mana. Remember? Properly, so... Uh, okay, uh, uh, looking at right now, what do you what do you think I should be doing? Uh, ferrying two, three uh, mangoes and then going ham on him? Or, uh, like, yeah... Because a rushing bottle at, uh, at this point is not viable, is it? Remember at the start where I said that you should approach this as a farm lane, but in case you notice you sense a weakness, then maybe, just maybe, it's a kill lane. Yeah. Well, right now, that is the moment you sense his weakness. He let the bear die. Either a player mistake, or either you got lucky, I don't know, but right now, he is extremely weak, because he either has to let the bear die again, which makes him weak, or he has to keep the bear away, maybe teleport the bear to the base, and move him back, and that again, makes him weak. So, right now, like you said, you want to play aggressive, and this is the perfect moment to be aggressive. And I would say it would make sense to sacrifice a little bit of your economy if you want to get some mangoes and a clarity. Ideally, you would still have the bottle shipped out, but in this very moment right now, the bottle would not come soon enough. You have the advantage if you want to press it now, you send yourself mana immediately. So yeah, if, if you have got the last hit, then battle would be the next logical option. But if you didn't in this case, then yeah, I would say if you still want to pers pursue the aggressive route, then the mangoes ASAP is the way. Okay. And again, you're also, I mi also I mis misclicked. I wanted to take uh, second point in my f uh, first spell, which I think, uh, which I regretted it in my third skill. Yeah. I was gonna say you hit the druid again instead of the bear. And and that also, yeah, that that, that also. also. Where the remnant, yeah, yeah. And but just but yeah. realized that. But yeah, vortex, yeah, vortex should be preferable at three. Oh, here Vortex, uh, okay, okay, okay. But will I get a chance to pull him? Or is it to save myself from uh, the bear? Dude. Why should I be taking Vortex? 
if you want to kill the bear, you must have vortex. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Otherwise, any better player would just get the bear out at 25% of health, either resummon him or teleport him to the base and move him back. But if you have Vortex, then it becomes increasingly harder for them to calculate when they can no longer play the beer in the lane. So for example, if if there's a creep advantage and the creeps are moving towards his base and, and he just used the beer to attack you, you can do the Vortex combo and that will do as much anywhere anywhere from 400 to 600 health and possibly kill him with the vortex combo plus the creeps and, and it's not mm -hmm. often that the druids can calculate this much danger and not play the bear so yeah vortex gives you okay. huge advantage like i said before if you want to commit to being aggressive then yeah just send yourself those mangoes because in this situation by the time the battle, by the time you meet the gold requirement for the battle, and by the time the battle arrives, you might have lost the advantage. Because that is enough time for the druid to send himself out a self, or send the beer back to base and make him run back. And by the time, any advantage you might have had is lost, because you couldn't continue pursuing that, that advantage because you had no mana. Okay. Okay, so me selling the mango was horrible here. Yeah. Like right now, he doesn't have a beer. And he didn't have a beer for like 20 30 seconds. If you had Vortex, yeah. if you had a few mangoes, he is dead any second he shows to the lane. <laughs> And even then, you are wasting whatever little mana you have to kill the lane creeps with a remnant? Why? Uh, because since I sold the mango, uh, I wanted to get, uh, get bottle pass. At this point, fast doesn't matter because it is already yeah. too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. The moment has passed. Radiance Courier. Is this okay or not okay? Doing this. Giving him free time on the lane. I would say less beneficial than it could be. You should okay. only... You should, if you are winning the lane, if you are creating significant pressure, you only move out when there is nothing better to do. But right now, the wave is on his high ground, he has the bear again, and that is extremely disadvantages for you, which means that you did have something better to do, and that is create a situation where this situation would not happen in the first place. Okay. Block the lane? Usually, yeah, block, and... either block the lane or after you have cleared the creeps 10 seconds ago, just follow him under his tower and deal some right clicks. Okay. And that would be, that would ensure that the next wave will also meet under his tower, and you can continue being aggressive, aggressive there, or fall back and stack with no penalty because the creeps would meet closer to your tower next time. Hmm. Okay. And now, same with the Clinks game, you are not recognizing when there is no more any point in harassing. You did a really good job levels 1 and 3. You got the bear down and you you made him 
lose a lot of time not having beer afterwards. But right now, if you would try to break it down yourself, you would see that you no longer have the lean advantage over him. He has a fresh beer and you have no mana, even with a bottle, you're slowly losing health. And the biggest eye glaring mistake is that you didn't take Vortex. So in the end, what happens is that from the moment he he has the bear again, simply by being uh, higher than level 3, he automatically wins this lane if you want to play aggressively. If you switch up to the farm lane, then you no longer you no longer dance in the lane, you no longer give him the chance to deal significant damage to you because he wouldn't have time between the waves bouncing. So you minimize the last lane status into a drawn lane status. But right okay. now if you try to be aggressive you automatically lose this lane. Yeah. You simply don't have the resources to be as aggressive as you were. You can you can even confirm it yourself through your own movements. Look you can just watch how you're operating. You're no longer comfortable going to the middle of the wave to drop remnants. Like, you know yourself that you will be punished. Actually, it was also for clarity, because I had clarity going with and didn't want him to cancel it. But yeah, uh, 100%. That's, that's why I'm playing defensively, even though I have, I have level advantage. So yeah, not now that we have discussed about how, when, and where the advantage was lost, and what you do, what you could have done to not lose this advantage, now, when you confirm yourself that the kill lane no longer exists, you gotta make it a farm lane, which is, I think, is... is I'm not sure if consciously or unconsciously what you're doing here is like you push the lane and then you go into the jungle. This is this is conscious, yes. Yeah. Also nowadays I would recommend any free moment to get instead of stacking this camp, you might want to stack the small camp to the left side of the rune the power rune because okay that if, is better. because if the golem spawn you, you your mana pool is fucked um yeah 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 okay okay so uh, what is the goal difference between this and that kind of... right so there is there is a goal difference but it is offset by the fact that it will only take two remnants total to clear any amount of stacks you might have made here. Well, in this case, it usually would take oh, three, okay. and if there's golems, there will be five or six remnants. So economically, it if there's no golems, it makes as much sense to stack this camp, and if there's golems, it makes way more sense to stack this camp. Okay. Earlier golems was not there, by the way, so that's why I started, but you are saying that uh, don't stack it, don't, don't take the chance, is what you're trying to say? I'm, I'm saying avoid the medium camps. Okay. D okay. During the laning phase, I'll only stack the small one, and when you're higher level, and you're just playing the farm game, then you can stack the, stack the big camp as well, but not the medium. Okay, 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 got, got you, got you. You have also missed the opportunity to to condition the lane to be pushed to the opponent's tower 
by the time the rune spawns. And as a consequence, you have missed the rune. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm realizing, yeah. I realize that at 34, 34 seconds, 3, well, three, three or something. Yeah. While you were busy with the golems, what you could have done in this situation is that the creeps are already on his high ground, which is a great, great, great status for you. And the best place to just fortify them and take the rune. That's it. That's a very simple play. Yeah. I think I just didn't know, I didn't realize at that time. Yeah, it's something that comes with the practice and actively thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, like there is no way he would have taken that rune if you have fortified on his high ground. Yeah, true. I usually do this, I don't know. But going into the game, I think... I... I was not comfortable with, with the game. So maybe that's why I'm still playing defensive. I mean defensive in the sense that I still have the fear that I might lose. I guess that's natural. Lose, well, lose, lose the game, game that is, because there's Lone Droid and then there's Arc Warden, so... Um, the enemy draft shouldn't really condition your moves during the laning phase, because anything can change during the laning phase. Would, like, let me, let me give an example. Would enemy anti-mage for you as a storm be scary? If he has Not to spend really. the next 20 minutes in the jungle farming the battle fury, no. But if your if your side lanes, the top lane for example, during the laning phase, loses extremely hard, and now the anti mage has a 12 minute battle fury, and then a 15 minutes uh, manta, which matches your orchid timing, in that case, that makes a huge difference. So what I'm saying is the draft, the draft alone does not impact your movements during the early game, but what happened during the early game impacts your future movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, correct. Did you not see the bear going up there? I saw I reacted uh, late. I reacted late, that's that's all I can say. Uh, like, you saw me pinging as well, but I was not sure what to do. Okay, we, we also got it. Well, you in your live games you also you also got to take take it a moment in your head to consider the risk versus reward factor like a best case best case scenario yes you you take this rune you got a a bit of gold back you refill the bottle but but the worst case scenario is that the earth shaker was coming, the, the bear was there, and you might lose all of your mana making this jump, even worse with the Earth Shaker, he can set up a gank with the stuns with a bear. Well, the bear can't attack you, but not, not in this moment, but in the future in moments like these where you have to do blind jumps like that, the enemy can easily set up a stun for you. Yeah, yeah. But this shaker was visible, so... Yeah, that's why I said not in this match. Ah, okay, okay, okay. But in general, yeah, the worst case scenario did happen. You you have wasted all of your mana, you didn't get the rune. So, if you see the bear walking right there, that's your cue to not chase the bear to attempt a disadvantageous play. No, okay. this is your this is your cue to make 
an advantageous play somewhere else. Like, if you would think about what does information uh, okay. that the okay, player I left... Just, I should have just went aggressive on him, make him come call the bear before even taking the room. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, now I feel stupid <laughs> not doing that. Oh god, okay. And this is all because I didn't take second spell. If I had second spell, I would have gone on him. 100%. Even if I didn't, didn't plan all that, I think I would have gone on him. Even still, if he has no beer, any trade he does, he loses the trade. He loses, yeah. So even just by walking up to him, you will force him to leave the lane. As simple as that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is, okay. So yeah, before this replay, you have gave me a very lengthy sentence on how to achieve a good orchid timing on an aggressive lane. But in reality, wouldn't you agree that the aggressive lane only lasted for the first three levels? In the end, the game plan for you still very soon falls back to the usual farm lane. Hmm, yes. I mean, the kill the kill lanes, even if you get a little bit behind, they still exist with the heroes like uh, Lena, Queen of Pain, Shadow Friend. But not with heroes like Magnus or Lone Druid. If you miss her timing, the timing is, is gone, it never comes back. Yeah. So from this moment on, I will approach this uh, analysis as a farm lane, because from level 3 it is a farm lane. Yeah, correct, correct. You can actually count I know, like five plus instances where if you had a vortex, you would have threatened some serious damage or kills. Yes, I mean I take uh, take three skills to farm, and I don't do that. So uh, it's all about decision making. What I what skills I take and what I do. Or of course. Uh, how do you, yeah. Usually, if you're not sure, if you're not sure if it's a kill lane, if it's a farm lane, it is still, as a storm, it's a very good idea to have Vortex by level 5, at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one small tidbit is that before you send yourself a courier, you should wait until you have enough gold to also send yourself a clarity with it. Yeah. Now, with you actually having Vortex, would you say it's a good moment to actually kill the bear right now? Uh, okay. As I said, I'm not familiar with the matchup, so going to be a uh, bear, I don't know. Going to the hero himself, yes, I know that I can kill him. 
uh, but I I do need help of. Hmm. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. Quite the opposite. You only have the kill chance on the bear. You do not have the kill mm. chance on the lone druid because of his ultimate, which is uninterruptible and adds 500 HP and bonus armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you do is you engage as per usual and do not use the vortex. Eventually, the lone druid will get scared. He wants you to use the vortex and that's where he fears you. But eventually, he, he will get scared that you're not using Vortex and the bear is dying. He will be forced to use the fear, either okay. on himself or the bear. And that's as soon as you walk out of the fear, you zip, you Vortex, you finish the bear. Oh, There's okay. no way you're not okay. killing it. Got you, got you, got you. Hmm. Ah, so, do the next level play. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah, that was your moment to kill him. I'm gonna say this one for you specifically. If you see yeah. any golems, just just abandon the camp immediately and go somewhere else. Okay. Even if uh, that's blocked for for certain period of time, it's worth it. Well, that was a kill. That was a kill. Ah. Right. Oh. Well, anyway, um, like I said, as soon as you confirm it that it's a not a kill lane, it's a farm lane, you always want to have clay which is running. Hmm. That way you would never have to run to the base and waste time. Okay, this time I wanted to, because I got mango. And I didn't want them to place in the middle of the camp. I mean, sorry, middle of the uh, base. Mm. 